In this Shadow of the Earth Tree video, I'm gonna be showing you my Stormlest build. This is a build that focuses on using the Mesmer Soldier's Spear and also using a medium shield in order to parry while also doing incredible damage with our attacks. This build is named after a popular character and if you know, you know. So first of all, let's take a look at the Mesmer Soldier's Spear. This is technically a great spear, not an actual spear. It has mild strength and dexterity requirements, and I have it set to the heavy infusion here for a couple reasons. First, we will be two-handing this weapon more often than not, so we'll take advantage of that strength scaling. It has pretty good strength scaling in my opinion, so we're taking advantage of that. And secondly, there is the new two-handed talisman that increases your damage while two-handing a weapon. So not only are we going to get that strength scaling, but we'll get that additional damage when we're two-handing it, which we do a lot. So both of those things work really well. And another thing is that when you do counter damage with spears and great spears or any other piercing damage in this game, it only boosts your physical damage. So if you're using the spear talisman, which we're using for this build, we are wanting to keep our damage type 100% physical to make the most of that. Now, one of the things I really love about this weapon, besides its very long reach, is that its heavy attack or charged heavy attack is a double poke. And what this allows us to do is hit repeatedly more easily with our heavy attacks. So if you're using something like Rotten Wing Sword Insignia or Millicent's Prothesis, you're going to be able to take advantage of that more easily. And additionally, if you're doing a status effect buildup with this weapon, which I'm not here, but you could, you're going to be able to set like Bleeding or Poison or Cold... Uh, frostbite you're gonna be able to set any of those a lot more easily so you could easily make a very good status effect leaning into that charged heavy attack but we're not doing that we decided to focus instead on raw damage you'll see huge damage numbers in this video thanks to counter damage physical damage and very good strength scaling and another thing that adds to our damage is the fact that we're using royal knight's resolve so we've leaned into royal knight's resolve further boost the damage of our charged heavy attacks because it will apply to both hits of the charged heavy attack boosting the damage of this by 80%. So when you get counter damage and when you get Royal Knight's Resolve at the same time, you get staggeringly high damage numbers. So the shield I'm using for this build is the Mesmer Soldier Shield. This is actually a medium shield and I've put Stormwall on it. And there's a few reasons that I'm using this. First of all, it's a very lightweight shield. It has very low strength requirements. We do have a ton of strength, so that's not a big deal here. But if you were playing a build that's similar to this using different weapons, maybe when keen scaling with a different spear, etc., this is a fantastic shield for low strength. It has 66 guard boost when fully maxed out for 10 strength, which is absolutely exceptional. And what Stormwall does is it allows us to have more parry frames so we can parry more easily with this than the standard parry skill. So we have Stormwall on here. It also fits the theme of Stormblast, if you know, you know. So we're going to be able to parry a little bit more easily, fits the theme, and additionally it can knock projectiles out of the air, which again, is absolutely fantastic. You could theoretically, if you want, use a great shield for this build for block counters. I like using Stormwall in order to parry, and that's because I use the Blade of Mercy in this build sometimes, which boosts your attack power after you've done a critical strike, and you tend to do that a lot in the landscape if you're using the shield. You don't need to use the shield all the time, so it's not 100% necessary, and you can even set this to no skill if you want so that you can use Royal Knight's Resolve while you're one-handing your spear, if you like. I do that sometimes depending on what I'm facing. For instance, if I'm fighting a boss that I know I can't really parry like a big boss or something like a dragon, you might as well set that to no skill for that fight because you're not going to be doing any parry. But Great Shields are also a viable option for this build if you're just talking about from a gameplay perspective, not from a theme perspective, because you're going to have plenty of strength anyway. The downside is they weigh a lot more, so you won't be able to light roll probably. Armor-wise for this build, I'm using the Highland Attire and the Leather Arm Wraps and Leather Leg Wraps for this build. And this is because it's just kind of the theme, the color that I was going for for the Stormless build. You can obviously use whatever you want. But one of the great things about Charged Heavy Attack on the weapon that we're using is that it actually has hyper armor after a certain point in the animation. So it doesn't matter what the poise on your armor is as long as you have a certain amount of your windup already going. And you'll probably see this a couple times in my gameplay where I actually trade damage but I don't actually get interrupted, and that's because of those hyper armor on that charged heavy attack. I also have St. Trina's Blossom on my head. This is simply because I didn't want to wear a helmet for this build because of the theme, and this just actually gave me a bonus of having extra focus, some more FP to play around with in combat. You could wear nothing here if you want, or some other head if you want. 
The armor isn't particularly important for this build other than I like light rolling, so it's going for a light armor set. And because we have hyper armor on the charged heavy attack, you don't really need to have 51 points for this build most of the time. It would probably make it easier to play, but then you'd be medium rolling. So it's kind of up to you what you want to use. I also will say that Leda's armor is also a good chess piece to use for this build because the running attack of this weapon is fantastic, particularly the R2 hits multiple times, and you may find yourself using that periodically. So talismans wise for this build, I have the Axe Talisman to further boost charged heavy attack damage because we're going for charged heavy attacks most of the time. We are going to leave that on almost all the time, almost never take that off. We also have the Spear Talisman, we're dealing 100% physical damage. We do get a lot of counter damage with this build. It can result in very high numbers. So those two talismans, I basically never change. Now, the other two talismans, I change a little bit depending on the situation. We have the two-handed talisman or two-handed sword talisman. This will apply when you're two-handing this weapon, and we two-hand it a lot. So that's going to help increase your damage even more. So between the counter damage, the charged heavy attack damage, and two-handed sword talisman, when you do a charged heavy attack that does counter damage, you're going to get very, very high damage, especially when boosted with Royal Knight's Resolve. Other talismans you can consider for this build, as I mentioned earlier, Blade of Mercy. If you're doing parries, if you're doing block counters and staggering enemies, that will boost your attack power for a certain time after doing critical. That is another very good one for this build. Additionally, the Lacerating Cross Tree Talisman is not bad if you find yourself using the running attack of this weapon a lot, which is very, very good particularly if you're using Leda's armor, those will stack for increased dash attack damage. So that's really good to use as well, depending on your play style. So attribute wise for this build at level 165, I have 55 vigor, 25 mind, 50 endurance, holy hell, 50 endurance, 66 strength, 16 dexterity, 16 intelligence, seven faith, nine arcane. You don't need any intelligence, faith or arcane for this build. Please disregard those as I began as an astrologer. 55 Vigor is there because we're wearing light armor. We do trade sometimes. You probably want to take this to 60 eventually, but you will never go higher than that. Mind is at 25, and in order to let us use Royal Knight's Resolve liberally, you could probably drop this down to 20, but I wouldn't go lower than that. You really don't need a lot of FP with this build. Strength's at 66 for this build because we two-hand a lot. You're not going to see a lot of benefit or as much benefit going higher than this when you're two-handing as you think you will. However, if you do end up playing one-handed, um, and shield a lot more, you might want to consider taking this up to 80 to further boost your damage when you're one-handing. I do this sometimes, so this would be a good place to put stats, and dexterity at 16 is simply there to meet the requirements of the weapon. Now, you might be wondering why I have endurance at 50. This is not recommended for most builds, and frankly, it's probably about 10 points too high for this build. Once you hit 40 endurance, you really don't see much stamina improvement, and I didn't really do it for the stamina improvement here. I did it to get my equip load down to light. You could use a talisman like you know, in one of your slots in order to make yourself light and save these attribute points if you want. So it's kind of up to you. You're not really getting a ton of benefit from 40 to 50 endurance other than equip weight, which I really wanted for this build. So it's really up to you. I mean, you can also use like the wings tier and boss fights if you want to be able to light roll and you can take a lot of points out of endurance, but it's nice to have the extra stamina. So I like 40 endurance at least, particularly if you find yourself blocking a lot with your shield. Um, it's just, you know, really good for this build. So for the Flask of Wondrous Physique, I have the Spiked Cracked here, which further boosts charged attack power. So when we're doing our charged heavy attacks, we're going to get more damage. Really, really good in any build that relies on charged heavy attacks. And I also have the Blood Sucking Cracked here. here. This will increase your damage by 20%, but will drain your health steadily. If you are going for quick kills, this isn't such a bad trade-off. If you're learning a boss fight, I don't recommend Blood Sucking Crack here. You might want to swap it out for something else like Stamina Recovery or the Thorny Crack here for repeated attacks. Both those would probably be better options. And then if you're talking about which great rune to use, I think Redon's is probably the best choice here. Getting health, stamina, and FP is all good for this build. Morgoth's is also not bad for increased health. We don't have really stamina problems with this build. We don't really have FP problems. But just having extra of those is nice, particularly if you're putting this build together earlier on. Um, and getting extra health is probably predominant. You could use Millennia's rune if you want, if you find yourself trading a lot. But I don't trade as often as you think. So I'm not necessarily getting a ton of use out of that one. So that wraps up my Storm Bless build. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This build absolutely slaps hard. It hits hard. It kills bosses quickly. It's good on the landscape. You can block with it and do block counters. You can parry with it. 
can boost your damage with Royal Knight's Resolve. All in all, it's really good. One of the things that I was trying a lot when I started playing around with this build was using like other storm-based Ashes of War, and frankly, there are not a lot of great ones. Stormblade is fantastic, but I've done a build with that recently, so I didn't want to use Stormblade. And the other one that's really good is Stormcaller. That's really good on a lot of builds, but it's better on status effect builds in my opinion. And I didn't want to do a status effect build here. So you could, you know, swap out Stormcaller into this build if you want, but I really like the extra damage on our charge heavies. So I don't it. As always, if you guys have further tips for this build or further questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try and reply to them as soon as I can.